Imagine a single lunch meeting that birthed not one, not two, but four timeless cinematic masterpieces. That's exactly what happened at the Hidden City Cafe in 1994, where the four Pixar executives birthed a creative storm. From that seemingly ordinary lunch break emerged a creative hurricane, resulting in iconic films like A Bug's Life, You can all just try again. Monsters, Inc. Step aside, kid. We're in a yeah! Finding Nemo and Wally. -E. This pivotal moment ignited Pixar's golden age, earning over $2.4 billion at the box office. But there is more to this story. Join us as we uncover how Pixar, a once small animation studio, dominated the whole industry, and discover the extraordinary chain of events that led Steve Jobs to accumulate an unprecedented fortune of $7.4 billion. Picture this. It's the year 1985, and Steve Jobs, the big shot behind Apple, gets into a heated argument with the CEO, John Scully, all about prices. Things get so intense that John insists one of them has to go. No questions asked. And guess what? It's Steve who gets the boot. Fired and fuming, he's determined to show the world he's not down for the count. So he gathers a group of his Apple buddies and starts his very own computer company called Next. Now, now, Next got some serious horsepower, but its graphics are a bit of a letdown. Not many folks were interested, and the future looks bleak. But then, something amazing happened. George Lucas, the genius behind Star Wars, decided to sell his graphics team. Steve realized that this could save Next, so he shelled out $10 million and became the proud owner of the business. That's when Pixar came to life. But Steve's journey was far from easy. Pixar had the best computer graphics around, but some designers were scared they'd lose their jobs to these computers. So they didn't buy it. It's a tough situation, and Steve used his own money to keep Pixar afloat. He's losing millions every month. And if things keep going this way, Pixar will go bankrupt, and 40 folks will be out of a job. Steve was desperate to save his team, but everything he tried failed, until one of his top guys, John Lasseter, had a light bulb moment. In 1988, John used Pixar's animation technology to make a short film called Tin Toy. And guess what? It won an Oscar. That's a big deal. The first animated film ever to win such a prestigious award. After the first win, John proposed something even more daring. Why don't we make animated films ourselves? Steve was running out of options, so he took the leap. He sold the hardware business for $2 million and focused solely on animations. It's a risky move, but they needed money, and they needed it fast. Steve knocked on Disney's door, the biggest studio around, and convinced them that Pixar has what it takes to create incredible animated films. Disney saw the the potential and signed a contract worth a mind-blowing $26 million to make not one, not two, but three films. But money's still tight, and Jobs needed a miracle to keep the ship afloat. Here came the big gamble. Pixar's first move with Disney will be followed by an IPO. That means if the movie's a hit, Pixar will go public, their stock will go through the roof, and everyone will keep their jobs. But if it flops, well, let's not even think about that. The big day arrived. The Pixar team gathered anxiously, waiting to see if their hard work will pay off. And it did. Their first movie, Toy Story, became a mega hit, raking in a jaw-dropping $30 million in its opening weekend. Pixar becomes the talk of the town, the king of animation. And there's no looking back. In the scorching summer of 1994, a group of incredibly talented individuals huddled together near the Pixar studio. Among them were the visionary director John Lasseter, along with writers Andrew Stanton, John Ramped, and Pete Docter. These masterminds were on the brink of completing Pixar's very first feature film, Toy Story. But during a lunch meeting at the cozy Hidden City Cafe, a single question ignited a spark that would change everything. What's next? 
next for Pixar. In that one unforgettable sitting, ideas began to flow like a mighty river. The minds of these talented individuals churned with inspiration, birthing characters and stories that would become the foundations of four blockbuster films. Their first idea bloomed into a delightful tale called A Bug's Life. Inspired by timeless fables, they wanted to create a movie that would be both visually stunning and have a captivating story. They aimed to make it easier to animate in the three-dimensional world they were exploring. The second idea, Monsters, Inc., sprouted from a childhood fear we've all experienced the monster hiding in the closet. They imagined a world where monsters were real, but not so scary after all. It was a story for kids, but one that would also touch the hearts of adults. From the depths of personal experiences, Andrew Stanton drew inspiration for the third idea, Finding Nemo. He wanted to share his childhood memories and transform them into a heartfelt movie that would touch the hearts of millions. Little did he know that his story of a brave little fish would swim its way to an Academy Award for Best and animated feature, and leave a lasting impact on both young and old. And then, there was the final idea born that day. A tale of love, perseverance, and the resilience of the human spirit. Andrew Stanton envisioned a future where Earth was abandoned due to pollution, and a lonely robot named Wally remained as the last guardian of our planet. Pixar took a risk with this movie, as the robots didn't speak much, but it turned out to be a risk worth taking. Wally became a fan favorite capturing the hearts of viewers worldwide. During that fateful lunch meeting, the creative minds didn't just talk. They grabbed napkins and sketched rough characters, bringing their ideas to life in simple drawings. These napkin sketches would become the foundation for the magical worlds they were about to create. The impact of that lunch meeting was colossal. Pixar soared to become one of the most revered animation studios in history. Their 14 films, including the four born from that extraordinary lunch have brought in a staggering $3.5 billion at the box office. Those four movies alone generated nearly $2.4 billion in revenue, not to mention the two sequels that followed. They were also recognized by the Academy Awards, receiving a total of 15 nominations and winning three. But here's the crazy part. Even with all that success, Pixar was losing out on money because of a bad deal they made with Disney. It just wasn't fair. So Steve Jobs, the big boss, decided it was time to fix things. He wanted a new contract that would make sure Pixar got its fair share of the dough. In 2002, Jobs went head-to-head -head with Disney's CEO, Michael Eisner. They argued, they fought, and Jobs even announced to the world that they were breaking up with Disney. But then, in 2005, Disney had a change of heart. They realized their own animated movies were kind of falling behind Pixar's awesome they wanted to be on top again, so they thought, hey, why not just buy Pixar? It seemed like a brilliant plan. Bob Iger, the new CEO of Disney, saw the potential in Pixar's movies. They had already made over $2 billion, and there was so much more to come. Iger met with Steve Jobs, the genius behind Pixar, expecting an argument, but got a surprising response. Jobs was open to the idea. Jobs was cautious though. He knew Pixar's culture was special, and he didn't want Disney to ruin it. So he pulled out the whiteboards and listed all the good and bad things about the deal. After long talks, they reached an agreement. Disney would buy Pixar for a mind-blowing $7.4 billion. Before finalizing the deal, Jobs checked with his trusted partners, John Lasseter and Ed Catmull. They agreed it was a great idea. In January 2006, Jobs signed the papers, and Pixar became part of Disney. But Jobs didn't just walk away. He gained a seat on Disney's board of directors and became the majority owner, owning 7% of the company. He's not only billions richer, but he's also a majority owner in Disney. Meanwhile, Disney's animation division got a major boost, and Pixar kept making awesome movies. believe that all this incredible success stemmed from a simple lunch meeting at the Hidden City Cafe? It was during Steve Jobs' darkest days, a time when he was forced out of Apple, that he achieved the unimaginable. Against all odds, he founded two groundbreaking companies, Next and Pixar. Little did he know that these ventures would not only lead him back to Apple, but also secure him a position in one of the most valuable companies in the world.
Disney.